Thanks for joining me for video three of this three-part mini-series on how to build an index in Microsoft Word. In the first video, I showed you how to build an index using the mark and index method, and that's what most people use. In video two, I showed you a much more versatile technique involving a concordance. It's a brilliant feature. Go check out the video if you haven't seen it. And in this final video, which is only very short, I wanna show you how to tidy up the index itself in terms of formatting, how it looks. Whatever formatting the original text had in the document, which could be the fonts, could be the coloring, could be the font size, those kind of things, that same formatting flows through to the index itself. So as you can see here, we've got some green text, we've got some smaller blue text here, that kind of thing. The first method to clean this up, and it's very basic, is just to use your standard font formatting. So let's just reduce this down a bit so we can see it all on one page. When I select stuff, I tend to start at the bottom right and select up to the top left. That makes sure that nothing gets missed. Often when you go top left or bottom right, you miss things. Then in the font group here, we could do things like unify the font itself. So let's make it all Calibri. Let's make it all size 10. Let's make it all black. Those kind of things, very simple changes, but it applies a wholesale change to everything. Headings, major index items, sub index items. So while it gets the job done, it's not that flexible. If you've used tables of contents before, you'll know there's a TOC1, TOC2, TOC3 styles, all the way down to TOC9, if you had that many levels, which is very unusual. But you can modify those styles to change the look and the feel of the tables of contents. Indexes have an identical system. You won't find them in the standard style gallery at the top here, but if you go to the styles group and you click the launcher in the corner, that gives you the styles sidebar. You'll see there's a section here that goes index one down to index nine, so index one is like your major index items, right down to index nine, which is like your sub, 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 sub items, if you had them. And index heading refers to these letters, like the alphabetic letters A, B, and C. And in this case, we've got a couple of numbers there as well because of the text that got marked. Let me zoom this up a little bit. If I click on a top level index item, like console, or maybe Pokemon colors over here, that refers to index one. That's the style that controls all that. If you hover over it, you can see all the different font characteristics and paragraph characteristics that refer to that level. If you want index one, index two, those kind of things up the top here, you just simply right click on here and on the context menu, choose add to style gallery. That will then be added to this gallery at the top here. If I now come down to one of these sub items like 3DS or Game Boy, one of those, that's index two that's controlling that look. So the indentation, the font sizes, the font colors, all that kind of stuff is controlled through this style. The letters themselves are controlled by the index heading style. Again, if you hover over it, you can see all the characteristics belonging to that style. So let's maybe start with the index heading, the letters themselves. If I right click on this, there's an option to say, select all the instances. So when we do that, we're isolating just those headings. That's the only thing we're gonna be affecting here. Then we can right click again and choose modify off the context menu. That opens up the modify style dialog box this is the same as regular styles. The middle section gives you most of what you need, and that's all we need here in this case as well. So let's just change the font size. Let's make it double the size and change it from black automatic to maybe blue and click OK. Now you can see it hasn't actually updated this information yet. We just need to apply it. So if you come down, it's still selected from before, click index heading, and it applies that new style to all the stuff that's still selected, those 16 instances. Now that sizing is extreme, but maybe some people would like that. It's just demonstrating a process here. Let's do a couple more quick changes. Let's go to one of the level one index headings, index entries, and repeat the process. So right click, choose select all 36 instances, then right click again and choose modify. Let's maybe just change the color here to maybe a bright orange or gold, or whatever color that is on your monitor, and click okay. And then again, click index one to apply it. So that's our gold lettering on the top level index items. Let's just do one last one here. Let's pick a lower level item, that's a sub entry. Again, I'm gonna to go to index two, right click, select all seven instances, right click again, modify to modify the style, and maybe just make this italic. Click okay, and then again, apply the style. So really you've got full control, you've got really good control over how your index is gonna look. Really, those three styles I've just been through, that's the index heading, the index one, and the index two, they're really the only ones you need to use for the index, mostly. Just to finish, let me close this sidebar down, 
Let me reduce this down so you can see it all on one screen. And sometimes you just need to control where your columns start and finish. And to do that, we insert what's called a column break. If you haven't come across this before, let's maybe put J onwards, starting at the top of the next column. So all you do is you position your cursor in front of J, you go to your layout tab and choose breaks and choose the column break. You can see it's moved the information up. If we go back to the home tab and turn on the hidden formatting, you can see it's actually added a column break there. It's like a page break or a section break, but it controls where one column ends and the next column starts. If you want to do the same thing for R maybe, position the cursor in front of R, again under layout and breaks, we're going to choose column. It puts another column break in, starts the next one at the top here. Notice how it tries to make things as even as possible, which is good most of the time. But it's good to have that control because sometimes you just want to keep a group of stuff together. It logically makes sense to have them together rather than a split between two columns or two pages. So I hope you enjoyed this little mini series on how to build and control and maintain and update indexes in Microsoft Word. A lot of people do tables of contents. They finally figure that bit out, but not many people think about doing an index or some have tried and they just can't work it out. So hopefully that's demystified a few things for you. I'd love to hear what you thought. Maybe just put a comment in the comment section below. If you like the video or videos, give it a thumbs up. And if you're interested in seeing more videos along these lines, clever stuff you can do with Microsoft Word and other Microsoft products, hit subscribe. And if you're really keen, hit the little bell as well, and you can get notified as soon as videos get released. Hot off the press.